Hi, hello, sorry I'm a bit late. I am here to talk with you about getting your sexy back or getting more of it if, if you've already feeling it. Um, three keys to feeling more luscious and lovable and alive. So bear with me for a moment as I get this going in the wild revolution. All right, here I am. Okay, so I'm going to share into the wild revolution. Mm -hmm. That's not what I wanted to do here. Sorry. Ah, here we go. Okay. All right. Hi. All right. I got it going. So yeah, how to get your, your sexy back. Um, yeah. So I just want you to feel into what would be possible if most days you were really feeling um, just on, you know, like you know that feeling where you're just like alive and you're going to the grocery store and you're like talking with the clerks and you're making jokes um, where you just feel up for being playful and silly and maybe it doesn't matter what you're wearing but you just feel like I'm on today so I want you to imagine what would that be like for you if you know most days you could be feeling that way Emily Crotty hi oh so nice to have your company here um, yeah, if you just could feel that, that lusciousness, that lovableness, um, that frivolity, um, what, what would that be like for you? And I'm talking about something, you know, I, I debated whether or not to use the word sexy, um, cause we just, we think that just is only about sex, but it's really about, um, the the god the high emily the the goddess properties the god or the goddess properties in us like you know the ability to to create and give life um so it's where our creativity comes from um that's what i'm talking about today the source of that and getting tapped into it um so um, in honor of today, I put on my unicorn horn for you and my, my glitter for you. I put on a dress that I just feel lovely in. My friend Evie gave this to me. Um, and I'm now going to take this off just in case nobody's taking me seriously. But sometimes I do wear this around town and, um, it just makes the world the way I want it, be, it to be. So, um... As we get started, I would love to hear um, what any gremlins that you have around this topic, because um, I've got some, man. Um, I just felt way more nervous than usual today talking about this topic. Um, so uh, just a heads up that this is geared towards women, but men, if you're listening, like feel free to tune in. Um, you're probably going to learn a whole lot and a lot of it's going to apply to you as well, but I'll just be mostly speaking um, to just the feminine parts of this. So, all right, let's dive in. Um, I'll be sharing with you these three keys. Hey, Elaine. Uh, I'll be sharing with you these three keys to feeling more luscious and lovable and alive and um, I'll be sharing some stories. S some of them I'm not sure if I'm gonna share them or not yet because they're pretty vulnerable. Um, and hopefully you're gonna end today feeling inspired. Um, aw, Elaine says last week was so fabulous. Thanks, Elaine. Yeah, boundaries, last week talk on boundaries, I'm just like on, I got it. This talk is kind of new territory for me. Um, 
And so what's coming up for me? I'd love to hear what's coming up for you guys. Ooh, Emily, what you got? I have, you're attracting too much attention to yourself, gremlin. Oh God, I got that one too, big time. Big time, especially when it's like, I wanna wear something kind of like extra sexy or um, provocative, not necessarily in a sexual way, but like just different, you know, that people are gonna see me. It's like, well, you know, don't draw attention to yourself. <laughs> it's like, but isn't that how you want the world to be to just like have people wearing kind of what they wanna wear and yeah. So anyways, yeah, boundaries, that talk is like, I got that one down. This is just edgy for me. Like the, the one that was coming up for me today or one of them, <laughs> it's not like there's only one, was um, like, who who are you to be like presenting yourself as an authority on this? Um, because, you know, does that mean that I have to like be totally like, oh yeah, I'm so lovable and luscious, so I'm gonna teach you ladies how to be that way. <laughs> and especially because I feel like I've, I'm coming out of a chapter where I haven't, I mean, there's been far worse chapters in my life, but um, where I haven't been totally feeling that way. Um, so this so this year, um, the word I picked for 2019 is um, succulent. And, and I, you know, I picked all the words that, that helped me feel succulent. Um, last year I picked, um, I think it was powerful and prolific was kind of, you have to be careful what words you pick for the year. Um, because I had a very powerful year and I ignored certain parts of, of who I am. And so I've been researching and applying the research and I'm going to share all of this with you here today. Um, before we dive in, you still have a moment to write about um, what gremlins come up for you around this topic. Um, so, yeah. Um, so I I feel like there were there are chapters in my life where I just feel like, you know, I used to be the queen of sensuality. Um, you know, in my 20s, I, I just, when I had all the time in the world, I remember just like taking the whole morning to like, you know, eat a mango, you know, naked on my back porch. Um, or, you know, I would just like get high in watercolor and then, you know, I'd put on my roller skates and roller skate to school and my jean cut off shorts. And, um, and again, not that it has to be about sexy, but it was just this feeling of like, just so embodied. Um, and this last, year I've just been so driven in a beautiful powerful way um, but I've neglected the more embodied way of being in the world and I think my, my business has suffered for it and certainly my my pleasure um, has suffered somewhat for it oh I love the little thumbs flying up on the side of the screen thank you yeah this is edgy for me so um, yeah <sighs> By the way, I have a super powerful intention setting ritual that I'm referring to here and I'm gonna and when the call's over I'm gonna give the link to that if you haven't gotten a chance to 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 do that. It's super powerful. It's all about feeling into how you want to feel for the year. It's it's a powerful way to manifest, not from up here, but from from a more embodied place. Um there's some random numbers on the screen. I'm not sure what that means. Um, let's dive in, okay? Let's just jump in there because I think I'm babbling a little bit because I'm so nervous. Okay, all right, you guys ready for number one, number one, number one, number one? Um, all right, number one. All right, this one's kind of obvious, but um, all right. It's so freaking important. So number one is slow down and listen to your body. Um, so, you know, we live in a culture, you know, I want to say blame it on patriarchy, but I don't think that's fair. I think this men really suffer from this too, you know, but we do say the man, we don't say the woman. Um, we live in this culture, this like worker bee culture, right? Where it's like, 
there's so much value on productivity and and I don't know about you but I can get really into this like loop of getting like high you know crossing stuff off my list and you know what can I do next what can I do next and how can I be more efficient um, and there are just endless things to do right oh my god like there's just stuff falling through the cracks for me all the time um, and so slowing down and listening to your body you're gonna have to think of it like an act of rebellion right you know you're just like fuck the man or you know whatever and I'm just gonna live life on my own terms because I want to be joyful I want to I want to feel pleasure I want to feel alive and so what you've got to do to do that is block off time on your schedule um, for example like two days a week I go swimming before I pick up my kids um, I've been taking lots of dance breaks listening to music in the morning doing a little dance in the morning um, a new one for me is not multitasking while I eat and like putting food on beautiful plates lighting a candle um, um, making time when you want to rest um, when I was prepping the last wild healers group I was just like going 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 and then my body said just lie down I'm like no I have to get the group ready okay fine body I made this commitment to succulents I will lie down so I lie down on this sheepskin oh we have these amazing big sheepskins oh my god um, they brought so much pleasure to my life um, in front of the fire and then I just had the best idea for the group the best idea so listening to your body you know uh, I'll often take breaks to masturbate in the middle of the day because that's like the time that I start to feel my body and just I don't know everyone's got their time where they're turned on and um, so like actually keep taking time to do that and then maybe take a little nap I know all of this sounds so radical I had a friend who would just masturbate in her office um, yeah, you can do that. Might have to be more quiet. Um, yeah, you know, bath, showers. So, um, I would love to hear from you all. Just type in below, like off the top of your head, like what, what are your favorite ways to slow down and step into your body some more? Um, you know, what are, what, are, what are the ways that you just like really treat yourself up um, and get into your body, whether it's, you know, like I'm saying, exercise, music. I'd love to hear from you. Um, and then also notice if you're having resistance. There's always resistance when we're on the edge of something that is more comfortable and habitual um, and stepping into something that might be a little profound. Um, I just notice this in myself. It's so interesting before any kind of ceremony or ritual, um, certainly before working out um, sometimes. Um, and even like Emily, when we talked about, um, Emily and I play music together, and I'm like, I don't really have time to, to play music. Um, what the hell? And then she came over and she plays the guitar, I play the ukulele, and we're singing. I'm like, why, why was I resisting this? We resist the best things. It's just this funny, Ego part of us is like, no, 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 you're going to, I'm going to not have ultimate control. You're going to start listening to your body. No. Um, so, um, I love Carrie says, take a bath. Emily says, a long hike, yoga, Ellen, hi, Ellen, singing with pop songs on the radio. Ooh, that's a good one. Ah, oh, it feels so good, right? Oh, I love singing. Singing feels so freaking good so good for opening up your voice um yeah i love these these are all great things um yeah so back to the resistance it's like you have to just kind of push yourself um oh well, emily you have the same reaction to playing music that surprises me um yeah you just have to push yourself like a toddler you know like this the toddler's like no i'm not gonna wear my jacket out in the rain and you're like oh sweetie I actually know what's best for you and I'm gonna put the jacket on you you know like oh sweetie we're gonna go to that workshop I know that you're freaking out but we're gonna go or like you know oh sweetie we are gonna take a break and we're gonna take a nap right now because you are tired and 
you're not even getting good work done. Like, you know, it's just we have to kind of take over. Um, and so related to what I'm saying is that your intuition is in your body. You will not be able to tune into your intuition unless you can slow down and tune into your body. All the answers are in there. And if you can tune into your intuition, you're going to know what step to take. And oftentimes the steps, like they don't make sense, right? They don't, they don't seem like the, the appropriate right steps to take. Um, so it's so important to listen to your body and get that relationship strengthened. And the way to do that is to slow down and find these practices where you're more um, embodied, where you can hear your heart. Um, so I'd love to hear um, any new commitment you might have to, to slowing down. That could be um, a new practice you want to incorporate in. It might be something that you're going to take off your plate. Um, you know, one of the resistances we often have is like, oh, I'm not going to have time. I don't have time for that. Um, so if you didn't get the talk on boundaries, I'll put the link in after this talk around that because it's so important to be able to say no and get things off your plate so that you can say yes to creativity, to sensuality, to slowing down. Um, so I'd love to hear just some new commitment that you have. Could be the tiniest little thing, like I'm not going to multitask while I eat lunch. Um, okay, so I'd love to hear from you around that. And I'm going to be moving into... Um, step number two or key number two, um, which is, I'm still waiting to see what your commitments are. I put glitter on for you, but it kind of just looks like I have oily skin. Oh, Shannon. Hi. Welcome back. Yeah. All right. I'll be asking more about commitments as we go, but feel free to put them in there. All right. Step two, key number two, is to treat yourself like a goddess. So, yeah, so when I talk about, you know, feeling more desirable, lovable, luscious, that, you know, that gets sourced from within. Ooh, I love Ellen says, I commit to movement such as dance or a walk every day. Yes, 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 yes. It doesn't, you don't have to like go to the gym. You could just put on a song in between one thing and the next. Um, just dance to one song. That will change your life right there. Um, so yeah, so that, that gets, so it gets sourced from within this like, you have to treat yourself the way you want to be treated. Um, Sark. Do any of you guys know Sark? I love Sark. Just give me like a thumbs up if you know Sark. She was one of my first role models with this. Um, the Artist Way is also a great book to check it out, to check out because there's a link here with creativity that when you treat yourself like a goddess, um, it's easier to step into that, that creativity, that, that slowing down. Um, and Related to the goddess piece is um, it's about bringing beauty into your life um, and and ma and making beauty. Um, there's this great quote um, in the color purple where she says, um, you know, I think it, it pisses God off if you walk by the color purple um, in a field somewhere and you don't admire it. Um, so related to the goddess piece is just about noticing beauty and, um, and tuning into it and bringing it into your life. So, you know, getting yourself flowers whenever you want them. Um, let me look at my notes cause I, I, I want to be a little more structured than this. Oh yes, yes, yes. Um. So in Wild Women Rising, one of the favorite things that we do is we make ourselves these permission slips. Um, and they're just like the silliest little things, but you'd be surprised what we don't give ourselves permission to do. Um, so, you know, some of the ones I made for myself earlier on, kind of Sark-inspired, were 
Um, you have permission to spend as much money as you want at the thrift store. You have permission to buy yourself any art supplies you want. You have permission to buy yourself fresh flowers whenever you want, to buy yourself plants, um, to garden when you want to garden. Um, they're silly little things, but I think we're so conditioned to think about what other people need, what needs to be done, um, what are other people's deadlines, and, and, and just be stingy with ourselves. Um, so it's so important. Uh, after I got out of my marriage, um, I had been, I was so shut down. Um, so I made myself a new permission slip. And I think one of the things on there was like, you can buy yourself one fancy piece of art, expensive piece of art, which like was just like, oh my God, that only rich people do that. Um, and it's actually up on the wall behind me. It has brought me so much pleasure over the last few years. Um, and you know, it's just however which way you're stingy with yourself. Like for now, like you can spend as much as you want at the thrift store. That's not something I need to give myself permission to. I need I need to give myself permission to go to the thrift store. So I've been doing that like every 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 Wednesday after yoga, I'll just go over to the thrift store, see what's there. Um, yeah, after I left my husband too, I had one on there. Um, you have permission to have sex with a stranger because I had never done that. Turns out I didn't really like it, but um, but I'm glad I did it. You know, <laughs> uh, I used to I have it. I used to have it up on my wall, the permission slip, and then my dad would come over and I'd kind of like put it in my closet. <laughs> um, yeah, and so along the goddess lines, like permission to adorn yourself, like wear whatever makes you feel desirable or feel luscious or sexy or sensual. Um, so maybe that's like wearing big goddess jewelry or maybe it's like wearing your, you know, some people think yoga pants is like not sexy. I think yoga pants are so sexy, you know, like where you're just like, yeah, I'm just going to show my booty to the world. Um, or maybe it's just like wearing this giant bird barrette or, you know, my unicorn horn, um, or your hair and pigtails. It's about just like feeling playful and fun and just like turned on by what you're wearing not necessarily sexually, um, or um, not wearing any underwear, that's a fun one. Or just like having like sexy underwear and a sexy bra, even if no one's gonna see them, you're gonna see them. Um, I love to just, I feel turned on when I'm wearing something new. So that's why I mostly shop at like consignment and thrift stores. I'll just like buy something new every week, you know, like what's with, like five bucks and then sometimes I just wear it once. I'm just like, oh, this is fun. Oh, it's not really my style. And then give it away. Um, so just like always giving yourself things for your palette, for your creativity. Um, whether that's like, you know, candles or, or art supplies or um, new underwear. Um, like a year ago, I spent like a lot of money on underwear. But before that, I had, I just went and just like bought all this underwear. Um, and I felt really weird about how much, like I don't even want to tell you how much money I spent on underwear. Um, it was like a couple hundred dollars. <laughs> Actually it was even a little bit more than that. Um, but I felt so good. I had all this underwear in my drawer that was just like stretched out and, but I couldn't get rid of it because I, you know, anyways, I won't go into that. You know, cause I can't give it away to the thrift store. I just have to put it in the trash, what a waste, you know. <laughs> like, but I'm like wearing this underwear that I don't even like. So, oh my God, what a, what a lift that was. And you don't need to, spend a couple hundred dollars to get this feeling you know it could just be giving yourself time to like go cut some branches from your yard and put them in a beautiful vase and just have them somewhere where you can see them like this is I'm not talking about things that I'm speaking to that you know those of you are having resistance I don't have money I don't have time for that so just like whatever it's gonna take to make you feel like your home is a temple whether that's making your bed um, getting yourself super nice sheets um, and the last thing I want to say on the goddess front is let yourself feel your desire and just be kind of outrageous with it, you know, like I think there's a lot of conditioning that we've gotten from our mothers and our grandmothers to like not want too much as women. I mean, we are living in a freaking amazing time right now, which is why I'm so passionate about empowering women, um, because like at least in my community, most of the women 
we can do whatever the fuck we want, you know? It has not been this way. This is so recent. This is so recent. Like, it's mostly the conditioning that is in, I mean, if you're watching this video right now, this, this applies to you. It's like, it's the conditioning that we've received that's in our way, you know, because even in our mother's time for most of us, and certainly in our grandmother's time, like you, it was kind of dangerous to want too much, you know? So I think the conditioning is like, don't want too much, like stay small. And, you know, and then the message is like, oh, that's selfish, that's greedy, that's outrageous, that's cheeky, you know? So we really need to overcome that. And so like, let yourself be outrageous, you know? Like, I want to like have a huge property and I want to be in charge of it. And I want to invite my friends to come stay and, and kick out people I don't want to stay there. And like, that's what I want. So I'm such a stand um, for you to like really feel into your desire and tell people about it. Um, yeah. So I'd love to hear from you. What is something you desire? Let's just like put it out there right now. What's something that you desire and you may or may not get it, but why not just go for it? I would love to hear from you. And I'm really excited to share with you key number three um, because it's, it's edgy and um, I freaking love it. So, oh, Carrie wants peace. Yeah. That sounds good. That doesn't sound too outrageous. <laughs> uh, oh, Emily, van. I want a van too. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, that, that's not, that's, that's, that sounds totally doable. <laughs> that sounds totally doable. Okay, Emily Karate wants a van. Let's make it happen, people. Um, okay, so key number three um, was, is actually something I was considering calling this talk, um, how to flirt with everything. Um, so basically flirt with everything and I'm going to get into the nuts and bolts of that, but I want to start with, I've got a few stories on this. I want to start with, um, my, one of the, my previous mentors, um, Steve Behrman, um, he had this great video blog on how to flirt with everything and I loved it. It was so sweet. He's like standing in Golden Gate Park and he's like, hello tree. <laughs> Hi. And it was just so delightful. And he was just talking about like, let's just like flirt with everything. Um, and some of you may know that um, the counseling institute that he led has since been shut down because um, he was having sex with his counseling students, which as most of us know is not a good idea, but he was a great teacher in pushing boundaries. And I loved him for that. And I was very confused um, after it came out about him and his students because it was like, well, is all pushing of boundaries bad? You know, does, does all pushing of boundaries end up in sexual misconduct charges? You know, is it okay for me to be continuing to teach people to push boundaries and get out of boxes? Um, and after a lot of soul searching, the answer is yes. Yes, it is. Yeah. I mean, there's a little bit of danger to it and that's okay. That's okay. Um, don't, you know, there are, oh, Jen, welcome. There are edges, you know, there are boxes that should be left intact, you know, like having sex with the people that you're counseling is generally not a good idea, you know, but that there's so much room to play in between. So anyways, I bring this up because there was this, you know, expose on him after this came out. And one of the things that was mentioned in the expose was his how to flirt with everything video. And it was just so interesting, right? Like, how is that connected? You know, like, how is that connected that if you flirt with everything, you're going to end up with sexual misconduct charges is kind of the connection that was being made there. And so it's interesting, the stigma that we have around it on my intention setting form, I, I put flirt and then I put, it's okay to flirt. Then I put, it's more than okay to flirt. So when I'm talking about flirting, well, first of all, I'd love to hear from you. Like how many of you feel like you're good at flirting? You know, give me a little like thumbs up, you know, how many of you feel like, yeah, I'm good at this. And then how many of you like used to flirt a whole lot? 
Um, but don't really anymore. Give me a thumbs up if that's you, you know? Like, not really, like, to the extent that you'd want to. Um, and how many of you want to get better? Ah, uh, yeah, I really want to get, like, good at, I feel like flirting in middle age for me is, like, a whole different thing that I need to learn because, like, I feel like people just don't flirt with me. I don't know, maybe this is just my story, right? People don't flirt with me because they think I'm married and that would be disrespectful and mer, mer, mer. So as I feel like I have to like get these cougar skills and initiate them. Um, and by the way, when I say flirting, I don't, I don't, it doesn't have to be like with the opposite sex and it doesn't have to mean that it's going to be sexual at all. So when I'm talking about flirting, I'm talking about like, like kids flirt all the time, you know, like, um, oh, Carrie wants to learn these skills. I know. I'm going to learn cougar skills. Not that you need Carrie. You're a lot younger than me, but, you know, I guess you're not that much younger than me. But, you know, like, I want to, like, just be that woman who's just, like, uh, outrageous, you know, like, making people blush. Um, but, yeah, so kids flirt all the time. Like, my daughter all the time, you know, she's just, like, she somehow learned that this is sweet if she, like, hides behind my leg when she meets someone. Or, you know, they're always just, like, <laughs> you know, they'll like run away or they'll just like invite you to play with them. So that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about flirting. I'm talking about play and frivolity. Um, and yeah, just being in your body. Um, another thing that, that I, one of the edges I pushed for myself recently. Okay, here's one of the stories I wasn't sure if I was gonna tell, but I'm gonna tell you guys, because I think I, I know and love almost everyone who's on the call today. I mean, if I, if, okay, I don't know, I don't, I mean, I don't know everyone who's watching, but all right, um, I am going. To, what is Earth a kit? Earth a kit. I am going to. Um, oh, Jen says. Wait, hold on. God, I need my glasses to read this. Ellen, first of all, says, I am great at flirting if I'm not too into it. If I'm into the person, I'm frozen. Oh, that's such a common one. Oh. And Jen says, being my radiant self is my goal. Yes, 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 radiance, radiance. Yes, that is exactly what I'm talking about, Mama. You got it. And Ellen says, Eartha Kid. I don't know what that means. Um, okay, yeah, so I'm going to tell you this story. <laughs> so, um... So I got this massage lately, recently, um, and you know, they asked me, do you want a woman or a man? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I like men a lot. Um, I wish I was more bisexual, but anyways, I really like men. So I'm like, I, 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 I want, I want to, you know, I was getting a massage for my friend too. So I got her the woman, I got myself the man. Um, oh good, Jen says I'm cracking her up. And then um, he was kind of cute and it felt like he was, you know, kind of happy when he saw it was me. I don't know. Maybe that's like how things used to be. I don't know if it's that way anymore, but it kind of felt like, oh, I think he's kind of happy. That I'm, I think he thinks I'm kind of cute. And so I just decided, I'm like, I'm just going to let myself like really enjoy this. Um, and like go to my edges of like, even like maybe even like enjoying it in a sexual way. And one of the things that really helped me was like, what would I tell my wild women to do? I would tell them to like, why not go, like, am I safe? Yes, I'm safe. So am I doing anything that is making anyone else unsafe? No. So why not like go to the edge? So, so I let myself do that. And it was just fun to like, let myself get turned on and enjoy it to that level. Um, and then I also like let myself just make whatever noises my body wanted to make. Um, like, I'm someone who makes a lot of noise and like, so it was just like, you know, like normal massage moaning, but like really letting myself moan and, um, and then kind of just flirt with him and it didn't really go anywhere, um, besides that, but I just felt like really radiant after that. Like I felt just like, it just didn't matter. It wasn't about what transpired, um, or any goal beyond just like, being embodied and let, letting myself be sensual and sexual. All right, what's Tracy say? When I feel good, I flirt naturally. When I feel not great, it's like foreign, a foreign state that I can't summon, no matter. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. So Shannon, you're gonna wanna go back and watch keys number one and two because that's all about um, how, how to get yourself feeling great. You know, it's all about getting yourself to just feel that way on a daily basis through, you know, just treating yourself like a goddess and letting yourself be in your body. Um, and then this step is about, um, yeah, just flirting with everything. And I had one more story, I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna share it or not. I've never shared this story. <sighs> and the reason I wouldn't share it is kind of more around time. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna save it. Um, but I'll give you just a little teaser. It's just around rape and coming back from rape and um, but I think I'm gonna save that one maybe for um, my wild women. Um, so transitioning, I guess first of all, what's your biggest takeaway? Um, whether it's like a commitment to doing something for yourself or just something new that you got out of this. One other thing I want, wow, should I talk about this? Mm. No, I'm gonna save this too. All right, I feel like I've pushed my edges enough for today. Um, so I'd love to hear from you what you got out of this, um, any next steps you're taking, any commitment you're making um, to flirt <laughs> or play, be more playful. Playful is so connected to what I'm talking about. Um, thank you, Jen. You are a radiant goddess too. Um, yeah. And so the last thing I wanna do is invite you, not this Saturday, but next Saturday, I'm doing my first day long free workshop. It's called The Gathering and we're already at 45, 50 women, um, which is maximum capacity. Um, that we signed up for, but we're looking into if we can um, sign, uh, if we can bring more women in. Ellen says, feeling so relaxed, was running back and forth to a painting that's been sitting too long. Oh, I love it, I love it, it's like a painting. <laughs> and you're like running back and forth. I love it, I love it. I, but I, I mean, if that's your work, that's your work. Uh, Ellen, I wanna learn more about you, Are you a painter, that's so cool. Um, yeah, so we're seeing um, if we can add more room. I think we do have like five spots left that for sure we can make room for you. Um, and then we're seeing if we can add more room. So we are going to be dancing together, playing together. We're gonna be messing around with some costumes. We're gonna be getting in there and finding the gremlins that get in the way of us being radiant. Um, and we're going to be tapping into intuition, um, so that 2019 can be awesome for you. I don't know. I don't really like the whole new year's thing. I mean, whatever, you know, like so that you can next level your life is what I'm saying. Um, I really hope that you might consider devoting your Saturday to this event because it's going to rock. <laughs> it's gonna, it really is, I think it's going to be awesome. So um, I'm going to put the link up to that right now for you. Um, let's see. I'll put it right here. All right, here's the link to register. I just put it on my business page. And I'll put it into the Wild Revolution. Um... Aw, oh, Lynn Talley says, yes, bringing sexy back. Oh, Christina Haas says, yoga. It's too bad I can't read the Wild Revolution quote. So anyways, love you guys. And um, I am excited to see many of you um, on the 26th. Shannon, thank you. I wish I could come on the 26th. But it's Sebi's birthday. <laughs> well, I love you guys. And... Um, I think next week I'm going to be talking about leadership. I'm not sure. I always kind of play it by ear. But thank you so much for showing up with me today to talk about this vulnerable 
topic. I'll bet a year from now I'm gonna be like, yeah, this is what I talk about, it's no big deal. This is how it works. You gotta push those edges. That's where the magic is. All right, so thank you for supporting me and um, Aw, Jen, you can't come poop on that. I poop on that. <sighs> All right. I love you guys. Have an awesome day. Go out, feel the rain on your face, get wet, and then get dry. Um, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Bye.